enthalpy and internal energy. Okay, so now after all of this background work that we've done discussing the change in internal energy for a system and state functions versus path functions, potential versus kinetic energy, now we're ready to start talking about thermochemistry. And in order to do that, we need to understand enthalpy. And so enthalpy is a new state function for us, okay? And this describes a reaction that occurs under constant pressure and tracks the energy changes in that situation, okay? So because we often or almost always work under constant pressure conditions, then we use enthalpy instead of internal energy to track those energy changes. Okay, so what is enthalpy? So what it is is the change in internal energy plus a little bit of PV work that is done during the reaction. Okay, so here's a, the change in enthalpy for the reaction and so we take the change in internal energy of that reaction and we add on this little bit of PV work pressure volume work, okay? So you can see our constant pressure here, and then here's that volume change that happens during the reaction. Now, the big difference between the change in enthalpy and the change in internal energy is this little bit of PV work, okay? Now, they are both state functions, all right? Of course, as is delta V, all right? So, Delta H, the enthalpy, is a state function. The internal energy is a state function. Delta V is a state function. Okay? But the big story here is that enthalpy is a state function. We're going to use that in various ways to calculate these heats of reaction. Now, delta H is actually the heat of reaction under pr constant pressure conditions. So we can describe that using delta H is equal to delta U plus P delta V, and by definition, the enthalpy is the heat at constant pressure. Now this does mean that the volume can change. Okay? Now, on the other hand, delta U is the heat under constant volume conditions, and basically, if the volume can't change, if delta V is zero, that change in volume is zero, then put a zero in there, that's going to make this whole term zero when we multiply those two together. So we just end up with delta U, and that is the heat at constant volume. Under constant volume conditions, then delta U gives us that quantity. Okay, so now what about thermochemistry? So this is the study of heat given off or absorbed during the course of a chemical reaction, okay? And as we've been saying, under constant pressure, that heat of reaction is the state function enthalpy. Okay, so here's a little schematic showing the sign of enthalpy, the change in enthalpy, versus whether it is exothermic or endothermic, okay? Now remember, Q sub P, the heat at constant pressure, is the same thing as the enthalpy, okay? So if our reactants are at higher energy than our products, we have a negative change in heat of reaction, okay? So our Q is negative, and if we just remember to the previous presentations, a negative Q means that that reaction is exothermic, so heat is released during the course of that reaction. Now, on the other hand, if we have reactants which are lower in energy and the products are higher in energy, then we have a positive heat of reaction, and of course, that's equal to Q sub P, so that's positive Q, and so positive delta H reaction is the same thing as saying positive heat at constant pressure, okay? So a positive sign means that it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, so take a look at this reaction, all right? Is it endothermic or exothermic? Now, you're, you might be thinking I didn't give you enough information, but really look at that reaction and figure out what kind of reaction that is. All right, what type of reaction? So we have a hydrocarbon and oxygen, okay? We end up with carbon dioxide and water, so what type of reaction? It's a combustion reaction, so we're burning something, okay? And delta H reaction for this is 
it's actually negative 10,700 kilojoules per mole. So is that endo or exothermic? Awesome. Exothermic. Yep, so there is a picture of a combustion reaction. And combustion reactions are exothermic. Okay, so what should you be able to do so far? All right, you should be able to define enthalpy both with the equation and with words. And you should also be able to use that equation in simple calculations. You should be able to define the heat at constant volume and the heat at constant pressure. And you should also be able to determine whether a reaction is exo or endothermic using the sine of delta H.